Thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, where in verse 4 we are told that fathers, or in the original Greek, which the Bible was written in, means parents, really, do not provoke your children, but bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21 kind of repeats this, not to discourage our children. Oftentimes, and I could attest to this personally in my own life, Raising your children in the Christian faith is a wonderful thing, but sometimes we can exasperate them, expecting such high standards for them that it can exhaust them. Billy Graham, the late evangelist, had one of his daughters turn out to be a very rebellious girl, trying to keep up the standards of her father. She talked about this at his funeral, how even when she came home though, her father and mother still embraced her despite everything she had done with her life. We ought to try to raise up our children, my brothers and sisters, in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven tells us that. However, we need to spend time with them, quality time. Getting to know them. What I mean by this is, personally speaking, when my daughters were younger, very young, I had to work two jobs, to try to sustain the bills, until I stopped working one of those jobs, I realized that they had clothes to wear, they had bikes to ride around in, but what good was it if I wasn't there to enjoy it with them? I was watching a movie yesterday on Netflix called Like Arrows. It was a story of a family of four children who grew up in a very prom pre prestigious home, beautiful uh, house, private house, but the father was never there. He was always working. The daughter got involved with a boy she shouldn't have been with. One of the sons got involved with drugs and the father didn't even know what was going on under his own roof because he was so busy trying to make money. Busy is an acronym, B-U-S-Y, being under Satan's yoke. Being too busy is no good. In 1999, I remember there was a, uh, incident that happened in a high school, Columbine High School in Colorado. Two children, two men, young men, went to a school and caused a serious catastrophe there by shooting up the school and killing many people. These two young boys grew up in a very prestigious home, affluent home. Parents made a lot of money. They were never home. They weren't even home to see what their kids were doing in the basement, preparing an arsenal. My friends, the best way, the only way we can raise up our children properly is through Jesus Christ. A little later on in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18, we have what's called the armor of God, putting on the armor of God. Six pieces of armor. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet prepared to bring the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God the helmet of salvation, and the shield of faith. Many times people say, what does all this have to do? What, what, what do I have to do to accumulate all this armor? It's all summed up in two words, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ. When it says that the belt of truth, that means we put on Jesus Christ. John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The breastplate of righteousness, Christ is our righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Having our feet with the gospel of truth, I mean, with the gospel of peace, Jesus Christ is our peace. John 14, verse 27, Jesus said, the peace I give you is not like the world. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14 says that the word became manifested in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. The helmet of salvation, putting on Christ again. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved, except by through Jesus Christ and him alone. And then the shield of faith. Faith, again, is Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. So my brothers and sisters, when you hear the armor of, of God sp spoken, of, <clears throat> spoken of in Ephesians 6, remember all of it accumulates in basically putting on Jesus Christ and him alone. 
following Christ, my brothers and sisters, and raising our children is not so much by how much you can memorize. My own, my, my own mother, my late mother, always used to say that God blessed me with a photographic memory. I could remember verses and numbers and things. But what good is it if I don't live it out in my life? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the first few verses in the love chapter, it says, what good is it if I could preach so boldly and talk so eloquently if I don't have love? And that's how it is with children, brothers and sisters, raising our kids, and I can honestly say from my heart, I've been guilty of this when they were younger. Oh yes, I could quote the Bible. I knew all the doctrines. I could say things that were true from the Word of God, but sometimes I didn't live it out in my life, in my actions. You know, we think that sin is the, the things that we shouldn't be doing, but sin also is not doing what we should do. James chapter 4 verse 17 tells us that. I regret not spending more time with my daughters when they were very, very young, working those two jobs. Um, but I'm thankful to God that I was able to spend time that I did. My brothers and sisters, there is no taking back time, the time you could spend with your children. I agree, we ought to quote the scriptures. We ought to bring them up as it says in Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven. Speak the word of God. Tell them the doctrines of the word of God, the right way to go. But they must see it in our lives. They must see it in that we care. There's an old saying, people don't care how much you know, but they wanna know that you care. And that's true for our children. As I watched that movie yesterday and it unfolded, this father came back to his senses, started going to church with his wife, committed his life to Jesus Christ in obedience to the word of God. And you can see the fruits of that labor later on as his children also became followers of Christ. And there was reconciliation with this family and the parents and their children. Today, my brothers and sisters, I don't know where you're at in your life with your children uh, or loved ones. Can I encourage you to not only read the word of God, but to meditate on it, to think out these scripture verses in your life and live it out in your life. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20, that a tree is known not by its suits, by what you wear, but by your fruits, how you live your life, how you talk, how you act in front of others. God bless you all this day, and stay strong in the power of the Lord.